Hello Year 4 and welcome to a new week of spelling and handwriting videos. Let's take a look at our Spelling Shed champion for this week. So here's our Spelling Shed leaderboard. Our top class for this week is 4S. Well done 4S. And the top speller in 4S is Thomas C. The second place class is 4M, with the top speller in 4M being Riley T. So well done Riley. In third place it's 4B, with our top speller being Cole H. And finally, in fourth place for the moment, is 4EP, with their top speller, Mia C. Well done to all of these top spellers. Let's see if this will change over the week. So, phonics spellers, we're going to start with you this week. Here are some of your spelling words. You've got one in red, one in green, and one in blue. Can you say them out loud? What do you think your sound of the week is for this week? That's right, your sound this week is... You've got it, think, think. You've got it, think, and third, third. What I want you to do for your your turn activity is try copying down your spelling words for this week and underlining the digraph in each word. So you've got think, thin, three, third, and thing. Can you think of any other words that use the digraph? Maybe you can think of some words that have the diagraph at the end of the word. Pause the video now and have a go. OK, five, seven and nine spellers, it's time to look at your spelling focus for this week. So this week we're going to be looking at homophones. But what are homophones? Let's investigate this together and see if we can come up with a definition. On the screen, you can see two words. I want you to pause the video now and say them out loud. What do you notice? That's right, through and through. They sound the same, but you can see that they have different spellings. Let's investigate this a little bit more. Although these words sound the same, through and through, their definitions mean something different. So this kind of through means to propel something with force through the air by a movement of the arm and hand. And this kind of through means to move in one side and out of the other. Let's see if we can apply those definitions now. On the screen you can see the two words through and through. You can also see underneath two sentences with some missing words in them. I want you to put the correct through into the sentence. So he threw the ball for his dog. Which one is it? And then he walked through the field. Pause the video now, have a go, and then we'll check it together. How did you get on? Let's check them together. So if you remember from the definitions, this kind of through means to propel something with force. So he threw the ball for his dog. It's this through, T-H-R-E-W. And this one, he walked through the field from one side to the other. So T-H-R-O-U-G-H. The words that we've just looked at together, through and through, are homophones. So now that we've looked at those, can you find the correct definition of a homophone? Is it two or more words that sound the same, but have a different spelling and meaning? Or is it two words that are spelt the same but are pronounced differently? That's right, Year 4. Homophones are words that sound the same but have different spellings and meanings. So through and through sound the same but they had different spellings and they meant different things. Unfortunately, there's no pattern or rule for homophones. The way it is spelt and its place within a sentence will tell us the meaning. On your screen, you can see two more homophones, missed and missed. They sound the same, but they're spelt differently and they have different meanings. This kind of mist you can see here in this picture is tiny droplets of water that you can normally see in the morning that mean you can't see very clearly. It's a little bit like fog. And this kind of mist is when you fail to reach or to hit something. Let's use those definitions to complete the sentences. What you need to do is pick the correct mist to complete these sentences. 
She missed the goal. The mist quickly disappeared when the sun rose. Pause the video now and write your completed sentence. Let's check them through together. She missed, it's this one, she failed to reach it. She missed the goal and the mist quickly disappeared when the sun rose. Let's look at two more homophones now. Blue and blue. We know they're homophones because they sound the same, but they have different spellings and different meanings. This kind of blue is a colour. It can also be used to describe when you're feeling a little bit sad. This kind of blue means when you breathe out air through pursed lips, or it can describe what the wind is doing. Now that we know the definitions of these words, can you pick the correct homophone to complete the sentence? The wind blew through the trees. Which blue is it? She needed a blue pencil crayon for the sky. Pause the video now, write out the sentence, including the correct homophone, and then come back and we'll check it together. So the wind blew through the trees is this kind of blue, B-L-E-W. She needed a blue pencil crayon for the sky. It's talking about the colour, B-L-U-E. Well done, everybody. OK, spellers, this is your last set of homophones. You've got meat and meat. Again, they sound the same, but you can see they've got slightly different spellings. M-E-A-T, M-E-E-T. And they've got different meanings. So this meat is talking about the meat that you buy maybe in the supermarket or at the butcher's and that you would eat. This meat means to arrange or to bump into somebody and greet them. Let's see if we can now apply our knowledge of what those homophones mean. So again, this is your turn. I want you to choose the correct homophone to complete these sentences. Which meat shall I buy this week? It's very nice to meet you. Pause the video now, copy down the sentences with the correct homophone. How did you get on? Did you manage to do it? Which meat shall I buy this week? That's M-E-A-T, and it's very nice to meet you. M-E-E-T. So this is the final activity for the spelling section of the video for today. I want you to be a homophone detective. Which of these words is not a homophone? You've got flower, animal and night. Pause the video now and circle the one that you think is not a homophone. Then come back and we'll check it together. Did you manage to identify the one that wasn't a homophone? That's right, it's animal. So here we've got flower and flower. They're homophones. They sound the same but they're spelt differently and they have different meanings. So this flower, F-L-O-W-E-R, is something that you might find in the garden. And F-L-O-U-R is the flower that you might use to make a cake. Then over here, you've got night, N-I-G-H-T. That's talking about the time of day when you go to sleep. And you've got night here with a silent K. So K-N-I-G-H-T is the night that you might find in a castle. Now it's time for the handwriting section of our video. Let's start with a handwriting warm-up. This one's a bit different this week. It's all about using your hands to make shadow puppets. Watch the video and then have a go. How to. How to make hand shadow puppets. You'll need a wall, a light, and your hands. Here's the dog. Put your hands halfway between the light and the wall. Stretch your hand out so your four fingers are pointing forward. Bend your pointer finger. Stick up your thumb to make the ear. What up, dog? The deer. Hold out one hand, bringing your pointer and pinky over your middle and ring finger and fold down your thumb. This is the deer's face. Bend your other hand back at the wrist and curl your fingers to make the antlers. Rest the antlers on top of the deer's head. Hey, what do you call a deer with no eyes? No idea. Exactly. The grumpy old man. Turn your hand upside down. Make a fist. Stick out your middle knuckle to make his nose. Use your thumb as his mouth. 
This soup is too cold. This music is too loud. This couch is too couchy. Hi, I'm McPufferson. Why is this great talking to me? The bird. Put your hands halfway between the light and the wall. Link your thumbs together. Stretch out your hands to make the wings. McGawk! Polly want a cracker? Yikes! McPufferson, out! <laughs> McGawk! You made the animals with your hands, now do it with your body. The dog. Turn your body into an upside down beat. And hold for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. The deer. Bend both legs and touch your front leg to your back knee. Lie forward like a sleeping deer. One, two, three, four, five. The bird. This one's a pigeon. Leave your front leg where it is and extend your back. Lean forward and back. One, two, three, four, five. The old man. Now, there is no old man pose, so just lie down and take a nap. Now that our hands are nicely warmed up after using them to create those different animals in the shadow puppet warm up, we're going to look at our handwriting. So this week, we're looking at a new formation, the zigzag monster letters. You've got V, W, X, and Z. And today, we're focusing on V. So as I said, we're going to be looking at the letter V today. V is quite a simple letter. You just need to make sure that it's the same size as all of your other small letters. So let's have a go together. We start on the blue line, down to the bottom, and back up. One more, down to the bottom, and back up. Have a go at doing about five of those at home. I'm going to model joining the letter V now. I'm going to do one where we join into the letter V and one when we join out of the letter V. Let's have a go where we join out of the letter V first. We're going to do the word vest. So I start here, down, back up. I don't take my pen or pencil off. I do the curl of my E, S, and then that T is the half ascender and you cross on the line. And you can see all of these are the same size here, look, on the cross of my T. Pause the video now and have a go at doing a few of those at home. The next word that I'm going to try joining is Eve, like Christmas Eve. So we join into the V this time. So we start with our E and all of these letters have got to be the same size. That one's quite tricky to make sure the E's look exactly the same. Pause the video now and have a go at these at home. That's the end of your spelling and handwriting video for today. See you all again soon.